Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about leadership techniques for roleplay admins. Running a roleplay is hard work. Anyone that's ever done it can tell you that sometimes it is completely thankless and frustrating. But also, running a successful roleplay group is one of the most rewarding things that you can do in the roleplay sphere. So what does it take to be a good roleplay admin? The things that I'm going to talk about here are leadership techniques that can be applied to lots of different things, not just role play, but we're going to take them and apply them to running a role play group. So what should you do first? The first thing you need to do to be a good leader is to know yourself. Now, this is of course a lot easier said than done, but it's a step that we must do to be a good leader. You need to know your personal strengths and weaknesses. You need to be intimately aware of what tasks you're bad at, what tasks bore you, and what tasks you hate doing. So take the time to think deeply about everything that goes into running a role play and consider what tasks you're bad at and what tasks you're good at. And then of course, what tasks you just don't want to do. Now, of course, you're going to need to give these tasks a try to accurately assess this. So how do you try these tasks? What I recommend to do is to become a mod for someone else's role play so that you can do these tasks and think about that self-assessment of if you're really good at these or not so good at these. Now, sometimes this is going to be hard to do. It's hard to get someone to trust you to put you into a moderator position where you can effectively try this stuff. So you might have to make your own role play. And if you do, that's okay. Understand if you're making your own role play and you're still doing that self-assessment and you don't know what your strengths and weaknesses are, that probably means that you're going to have some failed role plays. And that's okay. We all make mistakes. I believe that you're not really a role play admin until you have a trail of failed role plays in your wake. So dive in and make those mistakes if you have to. So as you're working on this self-assessment, understand that this work is never really over, but at some point you're gonna have a basic idea about what your strengths and weaknesses are as an admin. So once you've identified those, what do we do with that information? Well, we have two choices. We either delegate or we fix it. If possible, Practice the skill that you're bad at and try to get better. Now, for some skills, this is gonna take a lot of time and effort, of course. But the only way that you're going to know if you have the capacity to be good at something is to try to get better at it. So then what do we do for those tasks that we realize we don't have the capacity for and we're never gonna be truly good at them? That's the stuff that we delegate. No matter how much work you put into bettering yourself, there are certain tasks that you're never going to be as good at as you need to be to run your role play. So you identify those tasks and you delegate them. And this is how you build your mod team. So you're gonna take those tasks, you're gonna find people that either really like those tasks or are good at them, and you're gonna add them to your mod team and that's gonna be their responsibility. Now, what this means is that your team is never going to be truly even. If everyone is working on only the tasks that they excel at and not the tasks that they're bad at or bore them, some people are going to do more work than others. And that's okay. If you're running a good cohesive team, that team is never going to distribute tasks evenly. And if it does, you're gonna end up with people doing things that they don't really want to do, that bore them, that they don't like doing or they're bad at, and you're not gonna have an effective team in that way. If y'all would like a video where I go into more detail on building that mod team and some of the things that go into that, let me know down below, because there's more that I have to say on that. But what we've said now is just kind of a primer so that you kind of understand a little bit what I'm talking about. So at this point, you know yourself well, you understand how to delegate, but there's obviously more to being a leader than that. So what is it? It's trust and integrity. You must be honest with yourself, your mod team, and your players. So what that means is when you screw up, admit you screwed up. If you see something in your game that's broken, fix it. You also need to make sure that whatever rules you have set up for your role play, you need to follow them yourself. So make sure that you're not on activity checks. Make sure that if it's something you would give a player a warning for, that you don't do that particular behavior. 
It is impossible to lead if you don't live and breathe integrity yourself. If your players don't trust you, you don't have a game. If you're hearing this for the first time and you'd like a little bit more details on some of the specifics for what rules you might want to write into your game, I'll link the video up in the card where I talked about some good rules for RPGs. So I would recommend going and watching that if that's you. So what this is gonna mean is once you have those rules written down and codified, you have to enforce them and that's kind of twofold. So for example, if you see somebody doing something that you like, praise them. If you get an application for a character and you're like, God, this character sounds awesome, make sure to publicly put how excited you are for that character in the out of character section. Or like if a newer player asks a question and a veteran player answers it accurately, praise them for giving the right answer and thank them for taking their time to help the new person. Then on the flip side, if you see someone breaking a rule, issue a warning or a strike. Your players will pay more attention to how the rules are enforced than the actual letter of the rules. So exactly how you enforce those rules is critical to building that trust and integrity. And don't be scared if someone is kind of just like skirting past the letter of the rules, but they're not really living up to the spirit of them, to pull them aside and say, hey, what's going on? Um, I can talk more about those conversations as well. So if you're interested in a video like that, let me know down below and I'll make it. Okay, so we've talked about self-assessment, delegation, and integrity, and these are things that you individually are doing, but when it comes to running a role play, there's one other thing we need to consider, and that's the systems and mechanics of your role play as a whole. So this statement's gonna sound crazy, but bear with me. People do not join role plays to have fun or develop characters or improve their writing. People join role plays because they want to be part of a community that they're contributing to. It's the exact same reason people join churches or clubs or really any other group social activity. What they want is to make friends and with those friends build something better than themselves. So if you're a leader, you need to be constantly examining the systems of your role play to see if they facilitate this. If your role play is having issue after issue after issue, it's probably got to do with the systems in your role play because every system is perfectly designed to get the results that it gets. So specifically ask yourself these kinds of questions. Can players effectively add to the world or the plot? Can players easily communicate with one another out of character? Is it simple and fair to start and end new threads? Do your events and plot drops have sufficient inspiration for both old and new players? And if a player has an issue with the role play or another player, do they have a way to effectively communicate that so that they can figure out for themselves if they want to stay in the role play or not? Depending on the goals and type of role play that you're running, what these questions are might be the same as the ones that I proposed, or they might be different. So what you need to do is think about the goals of your role play and work backwards on the systems and the questions that you should be asking yourself. So those are my basics of being an effective leader when it comes to being a mod or admin for a role play. If there are any of these concepts that you would like a deeper dive into, let me know down below. I'd be happy to talk more about any of this stuff. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.